This is Miro, a tool so powerful and flexible that allows you to manage your projects and teams, create planning boards, diagrams and mind maps, and run meetings and presentations all from the same tool in the same place. Not only it works great and integrates with a lot of other third-party services, but it's also free and allows unlimited collaborators to work together on a single board. Let's take a look at it. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coded Dave. Today I have a review video for you because I will walk you through a fantastic tool called Miro. Or at least I think. They say that the name is inspired by the artist Miro, but I think they call it Miro. Anyway, before we start, I want to say that this video is not sponsored in any way or form by Miro. It's just a tool that I happen to like and find very useful, so I thought I should share it with you. So what exactly is Miro? Miro is an online collaborative whiteboard platform. As a whiteboard, it is so flexible that you can basically do anything and everything you want to need with it. You can create presentations and mind maps for ideation and brainstorming. You can use it for design and research, manage your team with agile workflows, create charts and gants for your planning and strategy sessions, and even for mapping and diagramming, you name it. And of course, you have sticky notes. I've seen people planning weddings with it and then use the same tool to pitch their new product idea to a board of investors. So the capabilities are almost limitless. And since it's a collaborative platform, you can share it with your friends, colleagues, or contractors and work all together on a design idea, project, and whatnot. For me, I use it for many of the examples I mentioned before. I do mind maps, I use the boards to manage the task in an agile way, and I share with my friends and colleagues to be able to collaborate on projects. And the best part, as I mentioned in the intro, is that Miro is free for unlimited collaborators. To be fair, they do have some paid plans, but the features you get with the free plan are mind-blowing. If you want to try it for yourself, for free, forever, you can use the link in the video description to sign up. All right, enough talking, let's see Miro in action. I've already created a team called Corded Dave, but you can always create more teams, giving them the names you want, and you can have different subscriptions and plans for each team. And as I said before, you can add unlimited collaborators and members. All you have to do is clicking on the invite members, and in here you can invite from Slack and Gmail, or you can just invite people using the email address, or even giving them a link that they can use to join your team. Once you have the team created and your members added, you can start creating your boards. On the upper part over here, you can either create a new board from scratch, or you can use some templates to make the process easier. Those are only six templates and are the most used ones accordingly to Miro. So you see, you can add Kanban, mind maps, user story, etc., etc. But Miro's true power is when you actually click on the new board and create one. In here, you can see that you have this use cases section, which basically contains all the templates you can use to create your boards. The building blocks one contains some essential blocks, as the name says, that allow you to create personalized and customized boards. And you can always add them to any board. However, in the other categories, you can find pre-built templates for all your activities. For example, you can create meetings, you can do mind mappings, storyboarding, workflow and product roadmap, you name it. And the good thing is that you can also see how they are actually used using the pre-filled one. For example, if I want to add this basic product roadmap, but I don't want to start from scratch completely, or perhaps I just want to see how that can be used, what I can do is use pre-filled templates. When I click on it, the template is added to my canvas already with all the information, and then I can go in, edit it, and so on and so forth. At this point, one thing I want to show you is that the canvas is actually unlimited. I can zoom out, move a little bit, and in here, add something else. So I can click on the template, and let's say I want to use this retrospective one. Use template, and this will add one more widget, one more component to my canvas. So I can easily pass from this one, move the canvas, and see the other components. This is pretty cool, right? And everything is customizable. For example, let's say I want to add more columns here. I will just press the plus, give it a title, change the color, and so on and so forth. And let's say I want to add some sticky note here. I can use directly the sticky note 
widget. I just click one and drag it on my new column. Same thing if I want to add a new line, I can just use the plus back here and voila, I have more lines. And I can continue doing so basically forever. As I said, the canvas is infinite. When you're satisfied with your board, you just give it a name. You can also add a description, set a cover image, either from uploading one, or if you have something on the board itself, you can select an image from the board and that's it. If now we go back, we can see over here that my awesome board is being created and I can always go back and keep working on what I was working before. So what do you think so far? Before we move on to the next part, hit the like button below if you are enjoying this video or you find it insightful. It will help this video to be recommended to other viewers and would really mean a lot to me. As we've seen before, we can click on here and have a lot of different templates for many use cases. However, Miro has something they call Miroverse and those are basically community powered templates. In fact, if I click on this, I can see a lot of different templates from third party companies, individuals, and so on and so forth, that allow you to completely customize the whole experience. Go to Miroverse, you can browse all of those templates. Let's say, for example, you want to create a presentation. You would just click on presentations, and here you have a lot of templates for doing so. This one, I just click on it, and after looking at the preview, I can click on use template to use it in my canvas. Now, of course, I can go and customize the presentation, but when I'm confident with it, I can just click on the presentation mode. And as you can see, I can go through all the slides and use it to run my meeting, customer presentation and whatnot. Lastly, let me go back and show you another very cool feature. If you click on these ellipses over here, you can add apps. What you can see here is just a very small subset of what's available. And you can either create your own apps to integrate with any software or service you want. Or if you click on get more apps, you can browse the marketplace, which includes hundreds of pre-built apps to integrate Miro with countless other services. You can integrate Miro with Teams, or perhaps you want to integrate it with GitHub to be able to track your issues in a visual way within Miro. The integration works bidirectionally. In fact, not only we can have data imported and managed into Miro, but also vice versa. We can export and embed Miro boards into other services like Notion, Monday, and many others. Let me show you the integration with GitHub. Just click on integrate. And in this case, this is powered by Zapier. I've already entered my credentials before, so I'm prompt just to select the account, click continue, and here I can customize the integration as I want. I can pick what issues I want to synchronize. Let's say I want every issue I can see. I can leave the organization empty because I want to use it just for my personal account. I can pick a repo. That's okay for me. So I will continue. I can test it to see if it works. So I'll continue. And what we will do is I will create a card in Miro for the new issue. Basically what's already set, it's what I want. Here I have to choose the account I want to use in Miro. And here, again, I have to set few values for the integration. The board, which will be my awesome board. And I'll have to pick a frame. A frame is basically a placeholder inside the canvas where things can happen. I've already created one GitHub frame. I can specify and customize other parameters, but I'm not interested in that right now. Continue. And finally, I can test and continue. Seems like a card has been created. And here we have it. It's a little bit small, so let me zoom in. I can make it bigger and I can see all the details that I have in GitHub. I can see the title, I can see the description, I can see tags and assignee, I can manage that. This is very useful if I want to include that in a team stand-up, for example, or if I want to have the status of issues all in a centralized place. Once again, the possibilities and the usefulness of this tool are basically endless. And this is why I like it so much. As we've seen, the free version is really complete and most of the time is just what I need. However, there are some features that the paid versions have and I find very useful. One of these is the integration with Azure Boards. Using the Azure Cards app, you can import work items from Azure Boards into Miro and create your own visualization for them on the canvas, together with any other element you want. 
This could be very useful, for example, to run team standups and retrospectives, or to show the state of a project to clients and stakeholders. Another feature I find very useful and unfortunately is not present in the free version is the private boards sharing. Using the free plan, in fact, all the boards are visible to all the collaborators in the teams. But with the teams plan and higher, you can manage the access rights for those boards, meaning that you can decide to share those boards only to the people you want and decide if they have complete access or only read-only access. There are many other features available only on the paid plans like single sign-on with SAML, polls, video chats, email support, etc. But as I said before, in my opinion, what you get on the free plan is a lot already and is sufficient for most of the use cases. I encourage you to try Miro out yourself for free. You can find the link in the video description. All right, lastly, let me talk about Miro's apps. All we've seen so far was on the web experience, but they do have some fantastic apps as well. Miro has desktop apps for PC and Mac, mobile apps for iOS and Android phones and tablets, and I mean, they even have an app for the Surface Hub. I'd love to see that in action. Let me quickly show you just how good this app is on my iPad. Let's open the app. And immediately you see that the interface is almost identical on what we have online. Let's open the board we created before. Here we go. We can pinch in to zoom, pinch out, go and edit, just double tap, and we can change everything we want. Move around and manage basically everything we have just from the iPad. And this is true also for adding new templates. And let's add this mind map. Use the pre-filled one. And here we go. We have this mind map created from the iPad. So let's suppose we are in a meeting and we want to brainstorm, we can easily do so from our tablet or even phone. Now, I would not recommend doing this on the phone. It is just a little bit too small, but you can definitely do it if you want or need to. All right, that's it for today. I would encourage you to try out Miro by yourself and see if it's useful for you. You can find a link to try it out in the video description. And remember that it's free and it will be free forever. So just give it a try. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this tool I've been using it lately a lot, and the more I use it, the more I like it. That allows you to manage your product, product. A tool so powerful, diagram and mind pump, mind maps. Another if it, this could be very fairy. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.